so if you picture a very vibrant kelp forest like you've seen in uh, ocean documentaries and next you just picture like a barren landscape um, that's how urchins leave it it's like comparing a jungle to a desert I go volunteer at the UC Davis um, Bodega Bay Marine Laboratory. Bodega Bay in the coast of Northern California is in a really neat position because we're right on a cold water upwelling. And what that is is when you have ocean currents that push the warm water away from the coast, so cold water from the sea floor rises up. So as a result of that, we get um, a huge diversity of algae, plants, and animals. Kelp forests are very crucial to the environment. Uh, kelp forests act as communities for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different species. My first time diving, you know, I have a vivid memory of just like it being nothing like I expected. Like literally just like a forest of kelp. I mean, it was almost, it felt like there was almost more kelp than water. There was so much kelp. Uh, 2014 or 2015 maybe. I saw like a, a big decline in kelp. It's hard because um, lately what's happening is hordes and hordes of sea urchins are um, invading kelp forests and mowing them down. Here we have two types of urchins. We have the red sea urchin and the purple sea urchin. Purple sea urchins are mainly the ones that are causing um, this environmental destruction. Sea urchins eat kelp. Kelp is their main diet. Every sea urchin, they have their spines and they also have these little, um, they're kind of like suction cups and what they, they use these to grab, to grab kelp. What they'll do is they'll send all these little suction cup things out and grab it and pull it in towards their mouth and their mouth is this kind of strange looking thing that has about five, five teeth. And what this does is they all kind of open and close like this. It's pretty strange. We've got an excess of sea urchins. So there are two main things that are causing populations to explode. And the first one and most drastic is a decline in sea star populations. So what's happening is there's a disease known as sea star wasting disease. And this disease is ravaging sea star communities. This disease, I believe, mainly affects um, ochre stars, ochreous sea stars. It causes their arms to rot away. It's very hard once a sea star has sea star wasting disease for it, for it to recover. The thing is, these sea stars are the main predators of sea urchins. The other factor that's contributing to this explosion of sea urchin populations is uh, otters. Otters are very, very important to any ecosystem that they live in. Um, here, the marine otters eat sea urchins as one of their main food sources, but otter populations are, have been very low for a very long time because they were almost hunted to extinction due to their pelts. So not only do you have sea stars that are uh, suffering from sea star wasting disease, but you have um, way less otters than you should have to maintain a healthy ecosystem. The urchins aren't producing gonads. You don't eat sea urchins unless they have contained their gonads. That's the tasty part. So um, you don't have anybody fishing for them because they won't make any profit. And if urchins cannot find kelp, what they do is they go into a dormant stage where they sit there and their metabolism slow down. And when that happens, they, they will not die of starvation, but they're alive. So if any kelp survives and keeps trying to grow, the urchins can then smell it and go eat it. They're eating all, all the kelp and they're out competing the abalone um, for the kelp. And that's, you know, having all kinds of downstream effects for all kinds of other species also. As of right now, the future is not looking too bright for kelp forests. You know, I actually think about that kind of often. I don't know, you know, if left, it's tough because human intervention and these types of things, like, sometimes it works. I think one of our, our hopes lies in honor populations recovery because in Monterey Bay right now, um, scientists are watching as otter populations are becoming more and more numerous. What we can hope for is that we can hope for otters to keep coming back. Either we can do something or um, we can hope that naturally sea star wasting disease is contained.